So in this lesson, guys, I'm going to show you a really cool trick that you can use that will instantly give you way more facility on a five string bass, right? In fact, you'll be able to watch this lesson, go and apply what I'm teaching you, and you will instantly sound way cooler by tomorrow. <laughs> your rabbit isn't it okay so check it out guys mummy is a little bit poorly isn't she yeah. mummy is a little bit poorly so daddy's at home looking after you and. and you but we thought it'd be fun to show you where mummy is right now should we go should we go show them yeah right okay let's sneak come with us come on come on come on come on okay there's the mummy hey, let's sneak Keep sneaking, keep sneaking. Man down, man down. So here's the deal guys, Saturday tomorrow obviously, or it's Saturday today, you'll be watching this on Saturday. I, I haven't got anything recorded, I thought I would have, but I'm working on this monster project where I'm, I was gonna release that today, but that's gonna have to come either next week or the week after, because I'm working on that. But me and you, we hang out every single week, and and that ain't going to change. I'm going to share um, a, like a, a really cool hack that will, if you're playing a five string bass or you're thinking about playing a five string bass, it's really going to help you utilize that B string like pretty much straight off the bat as well if you're a four, a four string player that's going to you know, make you sound like you've been playing five string for years. Also in this video guys, I'm gonna show you my practice rig. I think it's like the ultimate practice rig because I even did a gig with it last week and it rocked. Okay, so this may be the most ghetto lesson that I've ever done. I've just thrown a little camera up here. I've got this tiny little audio interface down here. But guys, I've been with you for seven years now, pretty much every single week. Give me a like for that. <laughs> One of the biggest issues I see with five string players um, is that they don't utilize the instrument effectively, okay? So they kind of play it like a four string and ignore this B string. They use it as a handy thumb rest until they're maybe in the key of D minor or something. And they use that D down there or they might be in the key of like C and they'll use the C, and obviously the notes in between and the B as well. As soon as you get to this fifth fret here, nobody really tends to use anything up here. And it's a really, really great, you know, way to add a lot of spice to your groove. You know, we've got this fifth string, let's damn well use it, right? So I'm gonna start off by showing you a really cool groove that doesn't really utilize the fifth string at all. And then I'm going to show you a super cool way of being able to start using it immediately without having to think notes or anything like that. We're gonna be thinking patterns. So let me just show you the little motif I was playing there so you can get it down. And then I'm gonna show you exactly how I was using that B string without even thinking about anything else other than what I would generally use on a four string. So the motif itself is in a C dominant seven tonality and it's just root. And then I slide up to the third and then the five and the six, kind of like a pentatonic bass thing, right? And that's it there. And that note there is a flat seven. And that's it really. And I was just messing around with that motif and using that as a, 
kind of, of like as a foundation for all the different areas that I went. But that, that little groover. That was always going on throughout it, right? But as you will have seen, I was really using a lot of this B string down here as well. But I can tell you straight up that I'm not thinking any notes at all. The only note that I'm actually thinking about is the root note of the tonality that I'm playing over, right? Which is that C there, okay? That's the only thing I'm thinking about. And then I'm just applying a really simple box shape underneath that root. This is really important, so check this bit out. If, if you just take one thing away of this entire lesson, just take this thing, right? That to be able to use your B string effectively, okay? To be able to use your B string effectively when you're grooving, you've got to be able to visualize where the root notes are with your pinky on it, right? So there you'll see most of the time I use that, that um, B string within the groove, I've got my pinky on the root note. That's the secret to it. As long as you've got your pinky on that root note, okay, you can apply this really simple box shape. So we've got the C here, okay. We've got this note down here, which happens to be an E, but I'm not really thinking that. I just know that it's that we're playing over a major tone, major tonality, the chord. So I can use this note here, this note here, okay, which I'm playing with my fourth finger, this note here, which is an A, which I'm playing with my first finger, and then the C. So all of that, I'm playing just using that box shape. Now, to move on from that, if you want to open up a, even a little bit more, you can start, you can actually join these four notes with chromatic runs. Okay, so. Okay. And instantly, you're utilizing that B string like you weren't before. When you're playing over a major tonality like this, my favorite notes to really highlight within this area, within the box shape, is that one there. Like obviously you've got the box shape. These are the most important notes of that shape. But you've also got this one on the second finger, okay? This third finger, I'm not so fussed about. I use it all the time, but I'm not really gonna push it. Okay, then the fourth, then I've got the first, really safe note. And if we're playing on a dominant chord, that's the flat seven, that second note there, that second finger note there, the B flat. So we're good, we can really push that and then just a passing note into the C. Okay, so if we're in the key of, let's say the key of B flat. Instantly, we can start using that same shape. So as long as we know where the root notes are on the E string and we can put our little pinky on them, that's the key thing, remember, you've got to be able to, if you're doing it from the index finger, then they're not going to be right underneath you, okay? Also, if you're on a minor chord, so we've been dealing with a major chord, a dominant chord, if you're with a minor chord, all you need to do is keep that same shape, okay, we're in the key of C, but that, that lower note there, it needs to be one down from where you were on the major chord, okay? So we've got like a rectangle shape here for the major chord, okay? That's the root note there. If it's a minor, you've got to go to this one down here. So it's a fret down from where you were for that lower third.
Okay, so before I show you my Mean Machine practice rig, which is under the table here, I also want to say the backing track that you heard me playing with earlier on this lesson, you can download it so you can give it a go yourself. I'll put a link below this video. Just hit that link, it'll take you through to the page, and then you'll be able to put your email in there and we will send it directly to your inbox. But if you're an Academy member, that groove was actually taken from our inbuilt um, drum machine that you may have or may not have already seen if you want to see that. So if you remember, all you need to do is go, go to the trainer. You'll see it obviously at the top of the navigation. It'll say trainer. It'll take you through to the drum machine. And then all you need to do is go to funk, click on funk. And I think we were using this one here, slow funk hi-hat. Let's check it out. I think we had it at 95 BPM. Let's check this out. There we go. And if you are a member, there's like a ton of different grooves in there, obviously. And obviously we've got the internal rhythm trainer as well, the metronome and stuff like that. So it's all in there. So if you remember, don't bother downloading the, uh, downloading the backing track. But if you aren't a member, download the backing track. And hey, if you want to check out Scott's Bass Lessons membership, which is the ultimate online learning experience for bass players out there just like you, make sure you grab your 14-day free trial. And also make sure you go and check out the Groove Trainer when you grab your membership. It's like a full-on integrated drum machine within the actual membership so you can get a feel of what it's like to play with real drummers and do it every single day without having to ratch around on YouTube looking for crappy old backing tracks to use, right? Okay, so here is my practice rig of doom. I've got this little dark glass microtubes amp. It's a Microtubes 500. They're super light. I just throw this in my gig bag. If I've got like a local gig, it's really easy to use this. These guys, you should check these out. They're just absolute monster cab builders. And um, and as I said, I actually played a gig with this, with this rig. I actually played a gig with this rig, live drummer. And although I had to really crank it, like it did its job. It did its job. I could have... I could have stuck this in the rucksack almost and taken it to the gig. How fun is that? Just want to say thank you for watching this lesson. And I know this one's been a little bit ghetto, but hopefully you've enjoyed it all the same because I am dedicated. I'm with you guys every single week. Now, without further ado, take it easy and I'll see you in the shed. Whoa, 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 where are you going? If you haven't subscribed to the Scots Bass Lessons channel yet here on YouTube, click the link, subscribe. I release two videos like this every single week. You can also check out our other videos over there. And if you've not checked out scotsbasslessons.com membership, check it out. You can grab your 14-day free trial over there.